Um, okay, so I was hoping to use uh, today, as noted, uh, for uh, to prioritize questions, discussion, um, uh, comments, um, confusions related to this last segment of the course. Um, uh, so, uh, or the when I say this last, the 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 one we've just uh, gone through, namely on profunctors. Uh, profunctors will um, form a key component uh, in the form of lenses of this uh, coming section. And before going on, I wanted to ensure that you're feeling fairly comfortable with uh, some of the material already discussed uh, related to profunctors. Uh, and I'd like to open it up for anything, regardless whether it's lens related or more, more general about profunctors. So um, that would be my, my priority for today. So are there any uh, questions that uh, we, could, uh, we could work on um, that you might have uh, coming out of that? Yes, Xiao Yan. Um, yeah, um, so my first question is um, how to understand the set in the definition of the profunctor? I mean, yeah, yeah, so yeah, so it's, it's the set related to all the possible um, relations between A and B, or I'm not sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, this is correct. Uh, so um, there's a, probably a little bit of confusion because uh, for part of our coverage of profunctors, we relied on a more, uh, a more basic and actually more common definition um, where they were functors from C op cross D into set. Uh, and we thought of them though as profunctors, as, as profunctor from C to D. Um, so I'm gonna show a slide here just to make, so you don't have to keep all the notation in your head, right? Um, so, something of this sort, um, it, that's a functor C op cross D, where C and D are categories uh, into set, we call a profunctor from C to D, like that. And um, again, this could seem initially confusing, except when you realize that set here um, is by default uh, serving to uh, to sort of summarize, this mapping the set is summarizing the ways of getting from C to D, the relation between C and D, which may not just be a functional relationship that A maps to a single D, but A maps to no Ds, or, so, or you know, an A and a C and C maps to no Ds, or it maps to multiple Ds, um, uh, or, you know, may map to, to one, um, all of those are allowed, they're related and set in general or summarized how they're related. Now this how for the sort of canonical example of the HOM profunctor, sort of our point of reference, this profunctor, which is uh, most familiar, <clears throat> which takes items in C op cross C into set, basically says for a given, for a given pair of objects in C, um, you know, what are all the morphisms between them? 
um, it's the set of morphisms here between them uh, for the Hom profunctor. It's the enumeration, it's a set containing the morphisms between them. Um, but we saw in our course of our coverage of profunctors that second could be other things here. For example, it, it might be for a given category um, C uh, and D, we might, we might be dealing with whether we could go from one to the other. And uh, so the set here would be, uh, would, would be you know, true or false, essentially. Um, we, it could be empty or have one thing in it. Um, or you know, we might list all the ways of getting from C to D, um, you know, the, the modalities to get from Saskatoon to Seattle. And uh, that would list them out in a set. And so this set, um, in the canonical case of the Hom profunctor, it's a set of morphisms. But in general, it, it may be something uh, a little bit more interesting than that. We, we then, for some of our discussion, we actually had, instead of set, this being a, a V category, um, where this is actually a category where the, uh, where the morphisms are labeled by V. Uh, and it, it's a it's a full category in and of itself, and that gave us some extra flexibility. But uh, in general, these are ways of relating C to D. Now, Bartosz Mieluski talks about um, profunctors as being proof relevant relations, and and in that context, sort of the when we map a C and a D to a set, it's sort of the proof of how they're related. It's a constructive thing. We're saying they're related in these ways. And with the home profunctor be, there are these morphisms between them and modalities. It's like these, this proves the ways of getting from Saskatoon to Seattle, that sort of thing. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Um... Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. So following this, I think um, in in last session uh, we have discussed the evaluation of a, a profunctor. So so for the evaluation, so it seems we will give two objects. Oh, sorry, two morphisms. Oh sorry, sorry, two categories. Right. And uh, uh, all. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm um, thinking on our coverage of, of profunctors. Um, uh, okay, so I think what the item to which you refer here is in the profunctor optics context, particularly, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we had, sort of six lectures on profunctors. And the final of them was dealing in the context of profunctor optics. And um, uh, here we had profunctors, which were of this sort of form with, with lenses or prisms or isos. Um, we, we could take the optics, which, like for lenses have this get and set associated with them or get and put. Um, and we capture them as profunctors. And the profunctors allowed a composition and had these nice properties. And, um, and there was sub uh, tensoring involved, which for the case of lenses was, was this Cartesian product and for the case of prisms was this plus, et cetera. But um, you were asking here about evaluation. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, I think it's about few few slides later. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Here. Yeah. This uh, one. Here. Or or here. Sorry. This here. one. Yeah. 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 So okay. here, like a a prime b 
B prime, are they objects or categories? Uh, a A prime and B B prime, these are objects. And in this context, for the, for the context of the profunctor optics coverage, we were dealing with a, um, uh, a definition of profunctors, which was um, uh, going to set here, um, uh, rather than this general one. And so in the context of profunctor optics, um, the profunctors were mapping uh, a pair of objects um, into set. Okay, and, and this is important. Um, so, and moreover, we were dealing with profunctors of the form C cross C into set. Now, for profunctor optics as captured at Haskell, this would, I'm sorry, C op cross C into set. For, for Haskell, this would be Hask op cross Hask into Hask, okay? Um, and so the gist of it is, or the, the upshot of it is that this P A A prime, these are objects, A A and A prime are objects in, in C or in Hask. Um, and P of uh, A A prime, is if you if you just kind of plug it in, that's like p p is the ma this mapping, and so when you give it a c op cross d or a c op cross c here, um, because d is the same as c, we will get back a set, or in Hask we'll get back um, uh, values from 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 Hask and. Uh, and so this profunctor here evaluated uh, is taking uh, a element of set and mapping it into an element of set. Uh, and this set can be interpreted uh, in different ways. For the Hom profunctor, this would be the set of morphisms, the set of ways of getting from A to A prime and we're turning them into the set of ways of getting from B to B prod. So uh, given a way of getting from P to P prime here, we get, you know, if you give me a way to get from P to P prime, this F, I will give you a way to get from W to W prime is the idea. Um, and uh, that could, you know, also be thought of here, right? If you give me a way from getting B to C, I will give you a way from getting to A to D um, uh, as, as a result. That's what the profunctor is, is doing. And um, it's mapping, think, think of P of A, A prime, think of, of this being A, this being A prime, um, that P of A, A prime is giving you a set of these B, C. And, and what the profunctor uh, optic is doing here, it's, it's uh, turning that into, oh, sorry, um, a way of going from, uh, from B, where B is this guy, to B prime, this guy here. So uh, given this this way, it's mapping that set into this set uh, from here to here. Each of these ones um, is mapped into one particular one along, along these lines. There are different particular ones from CAD, excuse me, uh, well, yeah, different particular ones from each one of these from CBC is prepended by F, postpended by H to give something from A to D. Um, and so this mapping is occurring in set. If this were 
whether it's possible to get from A to A prime, we'll map that into whether it's possible to get from B to B prime. If this is the modalities of getting from, you know, Saskatoon to Calgary, this will give you the modalities of getting from, um, you know, PA to Seattle or something like that. Um, uh, so, so depending on how the profunctor is defined, we're not restricted to the HOM profunctor, but um, it provides us a way of translating, uh, sort of getting from a, a more localized thing to a, a broader thing. I don't, I don't know if that helps your question, but that's what this, this application is. By applying it, we're getting back something in set or in task. Yeah, so I think um, based on your just comments, so my, my understanding now is that if we would like to evaluate a profunctor like this PAA prime, so what will be given is two objects, A, A prime and the home set between A and A prime, instead of only select a single morphism between A and A prime, right? So this is my confused part is, is uh, will we um, select the whole home set of A and A prime, or will we only select one path, like one morphism between A and A prime? We, okay, so so I'd like to burrow down to this because this is a type of confusion which uh, you know came up with me when I was uh, earlier in my category theory ex exploration too. So so P A A prime is is a set, right? Because A and A prime are members like A. A is drawn from C op, A prime is drawn from C. Um, and you would say, well, what does it mean to draw an object from C op? The only difference in C op and C is that the arrows are flipped at C op. So the objects in C op are the same as is in C. So this is A is also from C. It's just, we, we, we would consider the arrows backwards if, if this were a function or a, morphism. But um, given these objects here, um, we get back um, uh, a set. And so this is denoting a set. This is some set, right? It's like the set of going from B to C, um, the members of this set. It's some set. And a profunctor optic is a mapping of that into another set. What set? The set from B to B prime. So this is a set. This whole thing is a set. This thing is a set. And what is a mapping between sets? What's a morphism between sets? It's a function. And it says for each and every component of this set, if you map one set to another, you map, you know, um, um, <clears throat> the set of Saskatoon and Calgary into their strings, right? Saskatoon and Calgary, or into their abbreviations. I don't know. Um, uh, okay, I'll just say into their strings. Saskatoon is the string Saskatoon, it, it maps it. So mapping one set to another, you have to assign for each and every element of this, exactly one element of that. And that's what the profunctor optic is doing. It's saying, you know, for a given F, I will, so given a way of turning P's into pre primes, I will give you a specific way of turning W's into W primes. Um, and that is uh, what this mapping of profunctors is doing. The profunctor itself just says, given A and A prime, I'll give you the set of all ways of the, the, the I'll give you a, 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 a summary of ways of getting from A to A prime, which could be, you know, like the set of all ways of getting from A to A prime. It's this mapping 
which turns that into this set here. And that mapping involves as a mapping a function from one set to another, it, if, it involves setting each of these uh, elements of this set saying what it maps to over here. Does, does that help at all? Um, yeah, so, so, the, so the reason why P, uh, P of A and A prime, we will, we, will, we will get a set from P, A and A prime is because um, the home set between A and A prime? No, it's, um, it's because uh, a profunctor, uh, let me see if, um, if I can, because uh, this is really important and uh, uh, you, you're speaking probably for a huge number of people with your questions here. So, um, so a, a profunctor in general is going to give you a summary of ways from getting A to B. Um, and uh, this reflects the fact that it is this um, mapping from a pair into this, this set, this, this summary of or proofs of how they're related or ways of getting from A to B or ways of making a B from an A. Uh, we could frame it different ways, but um, the hum profunctor is just one, it's one profunctor, but it's, and, and it's a beautiful profunctor. Um, you know, it, it's, but it's not a, it's not a tremendously privileged one. It happens to be the uh, identity profunctor in the category where we have categories as objects and profunctors as, as morphisms between them. It happens to be the identity morphism, but it's not, it's not like a, it's not the greatest profunctor, the only profunctor. There's lots of other profunctors and some of these other profunctors are ones that um, you know tell us uh, whether we can get from A to B, or how we can get, or how expensive it will be to get from A to B, or the, the modalities for getting from A to B, or or what have you. And but all of them are joined by the fact that they're these mappings from C up cross D into set, or in this case. C op cross C into set, or for Hask, Hask, Hask op cross Hask into Hask. And this op, if we're just dealing with objects, if we get objects, again, a profunctor can lift, can lift morphisms. And that's why we have to think about the op, because it's this guy. This guy is like in the reverse direction. He goes from, you know, uh, from uh, A prime to A. But if we're just dealing with objects like P of A, B, A is just from category C, B is from category C, and the profunctor applied to them gives us this set. It gives it a set. That's why this is a set here. And it's a set, regardless of whether P is the home profunctor or the profunctor for uh, for whether it's possible or or for you know the modalities for how to get from A to A prime. Um, this is going to be a, a set um, for how it whether it's possible. It could be a full category, but but we could also do it with a set sort of list, is it an empty set or not? Uh, so this is a set because it's a profunctor. It doesn't have to do with it being a home profunctor. I don't know if, is that, is that helpful at all? Or- Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. What, I think maybe now I'm- These are tender. great questions. So keep on going. This is awesome. Um, yeah, I feel maybe now I'm kind of uh, more clear is, 
I think I should think of A should be located in like C up. A prime should be located in C instead of A and A prime are all in C something. Maybe previously why I confused is I always think A and A prime are all in the category of C. Yeah, and it's easy to say because like A is an object in C because the objects in C op are the objects in C. But um, it's just that when you, when you go to lift a function here, uh, well, this is in Hask, so it's a function, or you go to lift a morphism, the, thing, the fact that it's in op, C op cross C really becomes very relevant because a morphism from A to A prime, from A to A prime in C becomes a morphism from A prime to A in C up. And this thing needs a morphism from A prime to A uh, in order to have this nice property, right? We need it to kind of this to point in at our starting our current starting point from the new starting point and this has to point out from our current finishing point to the to the entire finishing point there um so yeah the fact this this is in c op is really important when it comes to morphisms when it comes to objects well c op objects are the same as c objects they're the same objects it's just the morphisms are flipped around. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know if 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 that if that helps. But um, I had a like like here's. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna help or hurt. But like, if you had C op cross C, you've got these objects. They're the same objects as in C cross C. It's just that a morphism here in C cross C going from A prime to A becomes a morphism in C op cross C of A to A prime. And that's mapping, that allows us to be mapping like together with this morphism, which was already in, in that direction. This is a mapping from A cross B to A prime cross B prime. Uh, in, in C op cross C, and we map that with this functor. So since this is a morphism from A cross B to A prime cross B prime, we can map that with our functor into a morphism between uh, C A B, uh, uh, this, this is for the Hom pro functor, but it works for others as well, C, C A comma B, um, that's all just the Hom pro functor applied to this one. So it's mapping between that and C A prime B prime, this one here. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think maybe now maybe I I I I I found my uh confused or wrong part. Because previously I always think the relation between A and B. Is um, should it be a morphism in a category C? It seems no, right? It can be any relation between A and B, or it have to be a morphisms be, uh, between A and B. Um. So it doesn't have to be a morphism um if if what you're asking is um if what you're asking is this thing does yeah. that have to be a morphism um it's like the relation of uh, between a and a prime it doesn't have to be a morphism yeah yeah for the I home pro functor for the home pro functor this could be a morphism Oh, this would be a morphism or a set of morphisms, right? Um, the hom pro, like for that, for that special case of the hom pro functor, um, uh, 
if you give it a from C op, B from D or D being C from C, uh, we get back a set, which is the set of morphisms from A to B, from, from A to A prime. But for other profunctors, no, this doesn't have to be a, it, it just has to be a set. It could be the set of modalities, um, the ways of traveling from A to A prime, train, car, flight, boat, um, AA prime could be that. Um, and, uh, and needn't be a morphism. Um, and this could be the set of ways. Um, so maybe this is, you know, the set of ways of going from Calgary to, to the, maybe these are the set of modalities from Calgary to Seattle. Um, uh, so you could go uh, via flight, you could go via car, you could go via train. Um, and then uh, and then we want to know the ways of going from Saskatoon to Hawaii. Um, and each of these ways um, uh, is going to give rise to a way uh, from getting from Saskatoon to Hawaii. Um, uh, so uh, each of these is going to, just like each of these here was going, there were, we could get ways of getting from A to D because for each of these, we have some way of getting from A to D. And that's what this is giving, this way of getting from Saskatoon to Hawaii. Um, and, and so those might be restricted to flight. There's no way I could get from Saskatoon to Hawaii via boat. Well, okay, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Um, Maybe if I put it downstream with the weir and I'm willing to, to, to go through, I'll, I'll see Wade and the paw on the way. Um, but I could also do it via, um, you know, I can't do it via train to get Hawaii. I can't get it, I can't get to it via car. But for each of these ways, uh, I, I'll get, um, um, I'll have some mapping of, of, of a way to get, um, to get here. So um, I don't know if, if that's, uh, that's helpful. Uh, mm. Sorry, so, so in your example, it seems um, between A and A prime, it is a morphism. It's like in the example um, given B and C, we will um, map to A to D. So, so B and okay. C, yeah. Yeah, so, so this is the HOM. I kept on coming back to the HOM profunctor, but the HOM mm -hmm. profunctor is not particularly privileged. It's, it's a very nice profunctor, but it's not, it's not a privileged profunctor. Um, um, it, has, it happens to have nice, uh, nice properties, but, but don't get caught up in it and being the only profunctor. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find some of these examples of the other profunctors that I came up with here. This is probably the best, the best set of slides for this, right? Um, so here, uh, yeah. um, sorry, doctor. Yeah, yeah. doctor. Sorry, that there, there is um, a, a big uh, black rectangle um, on the screen. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, it, it's it, is it gone now? Out of black spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Um, um, there was a Shakespearean reference there for anyone who who uh, recognized it. Uh, Macbeth. Um, okay, so um, so we have the hum profunctor, and the hum profunctor is nice. It's my friend, um, and I don't want to I don't want to diss it, but 
it's not a, it's not the only one. And and these are three examples of other other pro functors. Now, you know, I have to apologize because because two of these are not um, are not specifically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, th three of these are, or two of these are not specifically into set. They're into a V category, and and I apologize. One of them is into set. This modality one is into set. Um, so you know, given ways of getting from, uh, from, you know, Vancouver to Seattle, we can get from Saskatoon to Sydney, for example. Um, uh, this one is uh, is in um, set, and uh, here, um, though we're we're dealing with cost uh, cost categories, um, and here we're dealing with um, pre orders. So, so here the question is: Can we get to the pre diabetic state from a normal glycemic state, or can we get from uncontrolled diabetes back to pre diabetic? So this is associated with a, um, a bool category. Um, uh, and we can capture profunctors in these contexts as well, where PAB is, for example, false or true, or PAB is, you know, two. Um, uh, here, PAB would be, you know, uh, say train, automobile, aircraft, boat, um, and uh, and that would uh, and that would be PAB here. So uh, I don't know if um, if that helps at all, but maybe you can break out of the mindset that it has to be a set of morphisms. Um, here we we don't have a set of morphisms. Here you could you could say we have a set of morphisms, but I I think it's it's more helpful to think of it as a set, um, something like that. Um, uh, yeah. So does does that help? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, other people, I'd like to make sure, um, these are awesome questions from Shaoyang, but I'd like to make sure that everyone has a chance to ask questions here. So, um, anyone else uh, wanna put forward a question or, or comment or confusion or what have you? Maybe I'll clear up one thing I just said that maybe you're lingering confusion. I said, given away. So um, I'm going to screen my screen my share again. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay, here we go. Um, uh, mumble. Um, okay. Um, no, 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 no. This is at the window I want. That's not the window I was looking for. Um, uh, mumble. Okay, it's this this one here. Um, we said, give it a pair, you get a set, right? And then for this this one, um, I said, there's this optic mapping this into this. It's this kind of mapping from for an arbitrary profunctor. 
the supplies for all pro functors, all ways of turning A's into A primes. There's a corresponding way of turning a B into a B prime. And you know, to try to break us out of the mindset that it has to be a HOM pro functor, I give this example. Now you may be wondering, well, wait a minute. Um, uh, if we had a set of modalities from getting like Vancouver to Seattle, how could we get a set of modalities? So if that's a set, this you know, PAB is P Vancouver comma Seattle. And we have this set here. Um, and if you're saying, okay, so if we have that set, how are we gonna map it into a set Saskatoon to Sydney? Um, uh, where maybe that set is aircraft and boat. How are we gonna do that? Well, because if I said, okay, suppose I get from Vancouver to Seattle via um, boat, um, how am I gonna get from Saskatoon to Sydney? Well, maybe that's part of my journey from Vancouver to Seattle is via boat. And then how am I gonna complete the entire, um, entire journey uh, uh, otherwise, well, I can, I could do it from Saskatoon to Seattle, uh, otherwise via, you know, aircraft or something like that. Um, uh, and so, yes, I can, I can take this uh, via boat, um, but to get from this to this, I might have to go via aircraft um, uh, for the, for the entire journey. The boat won't carry me all the way because of the lack of maritime access in Seattle, uh, sorry, in Saskatoon. So, um, um, so there, you know, the set here might be more restricted. And so boat here might have to be, even though I could get to the, from here to here with boat, I have to take an aircraft to go from here to here because the boat option doesn't extend an, along this path, for example, unfortunately. So um, I can't get from Saskatoon to Seattle via boat, something like that. So um, that mapping of this set to this set um, may not be objective. Several of these like boat and train end up getting mapped maybe to aircraft or sorry, uh, sorry, um, um, mumble, yes, boat and train get mapped to aircraft when I'm going from Saskatoon to Seattle because they're not feasible in these other steps of the way. Um, that, that's what that mapping would involve between sets. Okay. Okay, so other questions or comments or, or curiosities? I guess. I heard you for a moment, Alex, but. Oh, I wasn't sure my microphone was working. Um, sorry. Uh, so I had a question about the advantages of profunctor off and maybe like the disadvantages compared to other representations of lenses. Yeah. It's kind of like just the context is more what I'm interested in than any confusion. Yeah. So uh, you've worked uh, more at a practical level with lenses than I have, but um, my impression from uh, my experience with them and um, um, I'd be interested in your thoughts into it is that when, when you have multiple, so there's, there's two sort of big issues. One is when you have um, multiple layers of 
let's say one type, let's say lenses uh, within lenses within lenses. Um, uh, trying to, um, to manipulate uh, what's going on several levels down within the lens. So maybe you have a lens that accesses the second component of a pair, and then you have that second component of a pair is itself a, um, I don't know, a, 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 a record, um, which has several fields and you have to grab a, a certain named entity within that. And then within that, it's another, it's a tuple, you know, a triple, and you've got to extract the middle element. Um, uh, in order, you can create, can define a lens to do all of that. It's just um, like getting it to go in the outer layer and then get that record field and then go in and get that element to the tuple. Um, it leads to uh, you writing a fair bit of boilerplate code, which goes and does this. And uh, which would then need to be um, written for to access the third element of the triple within the field within the um, you know the second element of the pair, the first element, the record or whatever. And it you could do it. I mean, there's no barrier to it, but it's problem. It's 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 a boilerplate. It's kind of um, not really intellectually. Um, uh, fascinating, uh, fascinating to do. It's kind of routinized work, um, kind of more of the same. Um, and yet it requires you to do it. Um, so that's, that's one issue. It's kind of sloggy work to kind of do, scut work to kind of do this. The second, um, uh, the second issue there is um, that if you have a lens within a prism or a prism within a lens, it's neither a prism nor a lens. And uh, so you can't represent it as a prism as much as you'd like to, and you can't represent it as a lens. And so, um, you know, you could create some ad hoc structure, but you can't even manually compose it in this way. Um, and those are nuisances um, that get in the way of just kind of um, uh, free um, fulfilling use of these. They they're, um, needlessly trip us up with, you know, with, with little details that are, um, um, uh, not really at the heart of the matter and are, are just trouble. Uh, they're awkward needlessly. So profunctor optics um, allow you to replace both those issues with composition. Um, so in other words, when you compose one with the other, you still get a profunctor optic. And this takes advantage of the fact that with this profunctor optic, um, you know, all of these uh, can be represented in this basic form of turning, a, you know, a, a given function here into a corresponding function. A given function from the pieces becomes a corresponding function for the whole, whether it's a prism or whether it's a lens or whether it's an ISO, you get this fact that they're, they can be represented as profunctors. Um, and, and a profunctor is simply a function. Um, it's a function here from W to W prime that, you know, is, that comes about by specifying this function. And um, by, by achieving that, we can compose these uh, because these are functions which you could use the dot operator to compose lenses to lenses 
and get something that instead of just going in one level goes in two levels, or maybe it goes in three levels. And so we don't have to write this boiler code that kind of unpacks the internal structure and takes it apart and, and, and you know, uh, massages it or, or um, manipulates it for the upper level. We just compose them. Or we can more, more significantly, we can take a lens and compose it with a prism or compose it with an ISO um, as far down as we want to go. And we would still get a profactor optic, which has the same general form. Um, and this, this allows us this flexibility of kind of mixing and matching and combining, joining in a way that we're not tripped up by these nuisances of, you know, a prism within a lens is no longer a lens, it's no longer a prism. We can't write it with that form and we don't have this awkward unpacking, even if we're dealing with prisms within prisms within prisms or lenses or, or what have you. So I see that as, as just kind of coming out of the desire for closure and the desire for to minimize boilerplate point us to the value of composability of these structures. We could compose them together to get a structure that um, uh, th that will deal with all of these types of objects. It's closed and it's, so given any two, we can get a, 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 a new one. And, uh, and it also minimizes the boilerplate because we just have to write for each in isolation and compose them together. And we have something which combines both. I don't know if that's helpful. It is helpful. Thank you. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the difference between monad transformers and like Levier theory effect representations. Mm. So. That's right. That's right. Um, that is exactly right. I, I think you're pointing to um, a kind of parallel parallel circumstance. That's right. Yeah. Other questions. I think we're we're uh, going to be going soon into office hours, but I'm glad to to do that. But uh, we have a couple of few minutes uh, left of class, certainly. So additional questions or discussion. I realized I didn't share that screen for the last one. I was just showing how these all have this general form lenses prisms, isos, they all have this general form. And therefore, when you compose one, you get something of its same kind. Um, and so you can just take their dot, give it a mapping P to P prime, you get a mapping. So give it a function from P to B prime, you get a function from W to W prime. Um, same thing here, same thing here. Um, here I didn't call it W and P because we don't really have a P, a, a whole and a part, but instead we have A's and B's, I called it. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Wade. This is great. Yeah, like if you could go and show those figures we were just looking at again, please. Sure. Uh, I guess I'm kind of curious about like a lens, like say we take the lens as an example. Uh, like, could W represent like a an an object in the in in a programming sense of the word, and and then what we're doing is getting one say field within that object and then operating on it and assigning it a new value and then and then say in an in a context of immutable objects we're we're generating a new object with that operation applied to one of the fields of the originating object does that yeah i mean normally this would be done in a functional context so this update it's called set or put, but it, you know it. It doesn't actually modify um, W. Like it, it 
um, it doesn't like mutate it, you know, the bits that are stored for it. But what it's doing is it's creating a new one of them. So, you know, where where W previously held a three, it gives you a copy of W where it now holds a four or something like that. Um, and, uh, but yes, I mean, uh, with, this could be done in a language like Scala where you have both, you know, functional and object oriented paradigms nicely mixed. Um, you know, you could have lenses essentially associated with accessing these fields from objects, for example, and uh, given a way of updating a particular field, you can get an update for the entire object um, as a result. But you could then, if that object were nested in another um, and in another and in another, think about, I don't know, a, a, a model where within a person, there's a representation of their diabetes progression. Um, and uh, within that representation of diabetes progression, you know, it, um, it has different representations depending on maybe what um, uh, interventions you have in place. Uh, and, and so maybe there's even another level within it. Uh, or maybe you have a representation within diabetes representing their uh, glucose insulin system. Um, and within that, uh, you have some some you know variables um, that represent the interventions to which that person is subjected. So that's three levels down. And what this is allowing you to do is to get something which from the very top level might um, give you back a new representation where that person is on this other intervention without having to kind of go muck around what's going on at each level. It's sort of a one-stop shop for getting kind of an updated state for that individual from the very topmost level without needing to get involved with everything, all the representation going down. And so here you might have, you know, a, uh, a lens that operates at the lowest pair of levels from the diabetes, glucose, insulin system, um, to a level up above it, representing sort of overall diabetes status. And then you have another lens going from that level up to the level of a person, and you compose them and you get a lens which uh, a profunctor optic lens, a profunctor optic, which which allows you to get an update of their glucose insulin status given an intervention that you specify. And so by composing those lenses, you get this ability to kind of uh, gr do all of that at once without mucking around the, the intermediate steps. That's all right. Thank, thank you, I think that's, that's helpful. Others or anyone.
Yes, Xiao Yan. Um, yeah, I just curious. So, um, for example, if we in a category cat, so which is a category of category, can can the profunctor can be um, served as or treated as the morphisms between two two categories? Yes, so, yes, yes. Okay. It's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Okay. So, so we have a category of, so I think confusingly, I think I've heard David Spiebeck referred to it, if I'm not mistaken, as the category of profunctors or the profunct, I think he calls it the profunctor category or something. I can't remember the exact term he used, but it was actually a category where the morphisms are profunctors and the objects are categories. And um, so each object is a category and the links between those categories, the morphisms are profunctors. Uh, and, and so there are these proof relevant relations, these ways that category C is related to category D. And the identity morphisms there, which go from C to C are the HOM func the HOM profunctor. Um, that's the identity morphism because you compose that morphism with any other morphism and you get the, uh, so, so you compose the HOM profunctor with any other profunctor and you get a, uh, you you get a uh, that other profunctor back. It turns out um, this like explicating it would require a little bit of of work here, but um, but it's it's true. Um, so uh, that that composition uh, makes the, that fact of composition makes the I, the the hom profunctor the identity profunctor um, um, so yeah I don't know if if that's uh, that's helpful but yes it's a beautiful category profunctors mapping these things and profunctors you could think of as like a generalization of functors um, and um, they like a functor is restricted to map each object, a, a functor from C to D. It's restricted to map each object in C and to an object in D, to exactly one object. Um, but maybe you don't want to want mark, maybe you don't want to map all objects in C to some object in D. Maybe some don't get mapped at all. Or maybe you want to map a given object in C into multiple objects in D. For those things, you need a profunctor. Um, or a profunctor will give you that ability. It's a relation. This object in C might, might go to none. Um, in which case, C, so, you know, C cross C, the profunctor applied to C. Uh, the object C that you don't want to map to any and any of other object D in the other category D will be empty on the empty set. Or maybe it maps to a set of more than one thing. So for a given, you know, C and um, it, it, for multiple D it's, um, or for, for uh, mumble, um, yeah, for multiple D, it uh, it uh, is going to have have uh, non non zero set. So um, so here, you know, you can have it go to multiple ones, or you can have it go to only, you can have it go to one, or you can have it go to zero. So it's a generalization of profunctor. Um, now, I learned in the past few days. Um, it's about the limit of my my knowledge now. A profunctor is a generalization of a profunctor. It's a parametric right adjoint functor, but uh, all I can do is about parrot the name, and I, I don't I don't know much about it at all. But um, um, 
it actually um, comes up in one of David Spivak's relevant talks on poly, the category poly. So, um, so profunctors are not the most general thing, but they are very, uh, very useful. And they provide this ability to represent relations and we could compose them. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And in fact, you've seen profunctor composition now that I think about it. Um, I think you actually may have seen that. Um, may have seen that um, you could think of the profunctors like a relation. So if you have category C mapping to category D with a profunctor P and category D mapping to E category E with a profunctor Q, um, the composition of them will have to consider, you know, is there, it, it's like considering ways you can get from C to E all different ways. And so it's got to consider all the different things that P can map to uh, for a given object C. And then for any of them, all the things those can map to over an E to get the entire mapping. Um, and it has the flavor of matrix multiplication, therefore, where you're, you're kind of considering these two and you're considering all the possibilities along there, much as we saw when we were reasoning about the distance, the cost to go from one place to another, uh, uh, or the, um, the ways of going from one to another. Um, uh, well, uh, that's what it has to reason about um, in that context. So anyway, that's uh, profunctors. That's a beautiful category, category of categories and profunctors between them. <laughs>